Hi everybody, this is Jennifer Navarrete and I'm here at Pinnacle Wellness and I'm here with Dr. Q and Dr. Ho and we're going to be talking about their philosophy. You know, you guys know that this morning I launched my uh, healthfitnessbeautyquest.com. Hopefully you're following me on there or going to join me and having some fun. And so talk about the philosophy behind Pinnacle Health. You know, I went to your site and um, you talk about the wellness lifestyle philosophy and it's kind of different because a lot of times we think, well, if I'm sick, I'm going to go to the doctor because I'm not feeling well. But other than that, I'm perfectly fine and I'm going to carry on my way. And your philosophy has to do really with not just the individual person feeling well, but also with the entire family feeling well. Yeah. Uh, I think we do have a very unique approach to health where um, I think it comes down to when it comes to health, there's two ways of approaching it. You can either be proactive with your health or reactive. And I think under our current society, uh, societal approach, it's more reactive where we don't do anything for our health and we wait for the pain, the symptoms to come, and then we try to regain our healthy drugs and surgeries. And I think that's failing us. So in order for us to be proactive with, with our health, we got to approach it two ways, one with nerve function and the other one with lifestyle. And I think we always address lifestyle, but we don't think about nerve function that much in terms of how our nervous system works. Of course, you know your nervous system controls everything, and if you're not connected between your brain and your body, it's not going to function the way it should be functioning. So that's how we approach it too. If your nervous system is functioning well, and you adjust lifestyle, meaning you're eating well, you're moving well, and you're thinking well, you're giving your body the best chance of being healthy and not get sick, and that's how we want to do that. Versus don't do anything for your health, wait to get sick, and then try to regain your health through drugs and surgeries, and that's not just working for us. You know, you guys talk about the whole family though as well. I mean, a lot of times if I'm feeling sick, I'm not really concerned with my family. I mean, I love them, yeah. but I'm not that worried about how they're feeling because I'm sick. And so can you talk a little bit about that family philosophy? Because it is, in the way I look at it, it's, it's kind of a different approach because you are taking the, the concept of like, we're not just wanting to treat you. We want to make sure that your whole family is well. Because, you know, who's around you is going to really determine how your health is too as well because if you're wanting to be healthy yourself and everybody else around you is completely just unhealthy, it's hard for you want to be healthy, especially if you're trying to eat right, if you're trying to exercise, if you're trying to just be positive all the time, and the rest of the family's not eating well, they're not exercising, they're completely negative, then it's hard for you to be as healthy as possible. So for us, our approach is a whole family approach. If we could change the family's complete lifestyle, get everybody healthy, it's going to make it more a better chance for everybody to be healthy as well too and not get sick as well. Do you have some pushback from folks? I mean, it's such a, to me it seems like a common sense idea now that you've said it and I'm like, well, of course the whole family should be healthy, but a lot of times we're so focused individually and we feel like, well, if the kids aren't sick and my husband's not sick, but I am, I need to focus on me. When you uh, talk to individuals about, well, you know, we're going to work on getting you well, but we don't want to just get you well. We also want to look at your entire family dynamic. Do you get some pushback on that, or do you get folks who are kind of like, yes, sign me up? Initially, sometimes yes, but the thing is it's all about the education process. If we could just really educate them and get them to know the information and really understand what our goal is, that our ultimate goal is to really just get not only you healthy, but your whole family healthy, but really the whole community healthy. If we could just hit everybody all at the same time, and once they get that, once they're educated about it, it's not too much of a push at all. This philosophy, I think, is, is smart philosophy is the way I'm looking at it. Um, is this something that you all grew up with, or is it something that as you were you know, learning more in your practice that you kind of started to approach it that way? We actually learned it um, in Hawaii. Well, when we saw family that got healthy together, um, everybody was That was a happy. light bulb moment, yeah, right? Yeah, was a light bulb moment. It seemed like the whole community was healthy. Everybody came in. We had doctors under care where, you know, patients would come in like, hey, doc, here and there. It's like a whole community, you know, mm -hmm. bus drivers, lawyers, and they all knew each other because the clinic that we worked at, you know, I mean, we saw like about between 1,200 to 1,500 patients a week. Whoa. So it's like, in Hawaii, it's small too, so everybody just knew each other. And we wanted to bring the same thing here in San Antonio where the whole community just gets better and everybody came along. Like, my bus, bus driver's getting adjusted, or uh, my doctor's getting adjusted, or, you know, my, my teachers are getting healthier. So that type of thing just makes us happy and makes the job more fulfilling. You know, um, one of the things that I, that I thought about, about when I was doing the research on, on this interview to sit down with you guys was just the fact that we in Western, in the Western society and, and, and just in the whole mindset of just being kind of pain centered. Um, what's the opposite, like what should we really be looking at as a philosophy? Instead of waiting for the pain moment, what should be the thing that we're looking at instead? You know, instead of thinking, I'm only going to go see the doctor when I'm in pain, what should be the, the actual piece that makes sense? Um, let me explain in a few ways. There, oftentimes we're trained to wait for pain and we think that's a reliable indicator of health, but it's not. 
It's just like having a cavity. By, by the time you feel that cavity, you know, that's a big hole in your tooth already, right? Right, you've been eating sugar, which, you know, you should have known you were, you know, not brushing your teeth that night. So we've done it to ourselves. That's right. So I always tell people, you know, I think we get that word health so muddled up. We think just because we look good, feel good, not be diagnosed with anything, not be in pain, we're good, we're healthy. And I tell people that's not sufficient anymore because you can look good, feel good, not be in pain, not be diagnosed with anything, all the way up to the heart attack. And the heart attack happens to be the first symptom. So those are the healthy. folks, wait, who are jogging yeah. and in really good shape and then have heart attack and die. That's right. So now let's be more focused on being proactive. What are you doing each and every day to keep getting stronger and keep getting healthier and not wait for the pain symptoms? And that's the only way you can guarantee health is by doing the right things each and every day to keep getting stronger and healthier. For us also too, it's um, one big thing is getting your spine checked because the majority of the people, by the time they come to our clinic, they're about 40 to 45 years old, and that's when they get their first spinal checkup. But in order for your body to fully function, again, your brain has to have full communication between your brain and your body, and only to know so, you have to you know, check your nervous system, check your spine, and that's how one of the ways we make sure that everybody's functioning at their highest level is by checking their spine, checking their nervous system, making sure everything's functioning as well. I mean, blood work is another good indicator on how your health is doing on the inside, not just looking for, you know, certain markers, but just to see your overall health in the inside as well. You know, you mentioned that 40 to 50 year old age, and I get the feeling it's because we've been living fast and hard and maybe haven't been taking this good care of ourselves, and that's the pain point. So it sounds like you're saying that um, anybody should be coming in at any age. I mean, are we looking at, is there a certain uh, beginning phase, like maybe when you hit 18, you should go in and get looked at, or is there just a range? No, we check, we check even babies, because the spine can be misaligned coming up with uh, the birth canal. Wow. So that's babies. Yeah, so if you can imagine, you know how, about the, around the age of 45, 50, that's the first spinal checkup. Can you imagine going 45 to 50 years old, years old and then go get your teeth checked? Basically the same. Um, yeah. Wow, I never thought about it that okay, way. Just fine. <laughs> As you can see there, I don't know. Okay, let me take this. So, this is how healthy your spine look, but just like your teeth, if you have cavities in your teeth, mm -hmm. your teeth decay as well too, so your spine can go into a decaying process. So by the time you're 45 or 50, you're in pain, you're probably what we call phase two or phase three spinal degeneration. Okay? And your nerves are supposed to be this healthy, but all your nerves are attached to all your organs, and if your nerves are looking like this, your organs are not going to be healthy. Oh, I never even thought of that. Yeah. So, spine health is related to organ health as That's well. True. It's related to just overall health in general because, again, your nervous system controls everything. And if your nervous system can't communicate to the rest of your body, then how can your body function? Whether it be your heart, your lungs, your stomach, your digestive system, your immune system, just completely everything, basically. Wow, you know, I, I think if anybody spent any small amount of time with you all, it's like I'm having that light bulb moment because now that you're telling me all this, I'm like, of course, it's obvious. Why wouldn't I think that? But it's not something that I've ever been taught or nothing that's really you know, been to the forefront of the things that I'm working on. Um, you all give a lot of workshops. You give a lot of courses. You have, you know, dinner with the docs. You do lunch and learns. Um, you know, I get the feeling that, that the reason you do that is in order to share some of that education, but talk a little bit about the motivation behind it. Well, what really motivates us is uh, looking at the dental industry. They did a phenomenal job at educating. You know, we don't wait till our teeth hurt to go get checked. We get our teeth checked once every six months, twice a year. We want to really copy that. And I think as a profession, we can do a better job than educating the public. Because it's sad to me when I do these talks about the common community and I ask people, when's the last time you got your spine checked? And most of them say never. And I find it sad because when people do come in and they're like phase two or phase three generation I talked about, and they say, how come nobody ever told me this before? I wish I had known about this earlier. And that totally breaks my heart. And we need to do our job, a better job at educating people so they can be healthier. And I think as a whole, if we're healthier as a community, you know, everybody's lives can be healthier. We're going to interact with each other better. And you know, we all, we've all been sick before, and it's not fun, right? Everybody's grouchy, you all grumpy. We just want everybody just to be happy and healthy. That's all. You know, it makes a lot of sense because you have someone who's in pain, and so uh, at the supermarket they may snap at, at the cashier, and then the cashier gets upset, and she snaps at the bag boy, and, and it just is this kind of like this domino effect. That's but right. we could have a reverse domino effect, right? Of uh, someone being kind and smiling and laughing, and so I can see where your philosophy really could make not just San Antonio a better place, but you know, the entire you know city, the entire community, the entire country, and maybe even the globe. Maybe we through chiropractic care we could have like a kinder, gentler world, which if that's what it takes, I'm totally for it. You know, uh, I'm here, I, I'm not sure, you know, I'm here because um, I bike with our mutual friend Penny McElroy, and I know that she comes and sees you, and she's been telling me all about the stuff that, that you all do for her, and just the differences that she has seen in her own life. And I was telling her my story that I was getting ready to launch something 
uh, a little, kind of a little daunting for me, which was that I wanted to kind of really throw myself out there as, and, and I'm doing what I call a health, fitness, beauty quest. And I think that um, health, fitness, and beauty can be different things to different people. Um, some folks are going to place maybe beauty at the top of the list, and, and notice the way that, that I, I put it, health, fitness, beauty, because in my mind, those are the areas of importance. And I think if you're healthy and you're fit, your natural beauty shines through. And, and I think that that's, so for me, those are the places of importance. And throw, doing something like this, it's kind of a little scary. Um, I, I, sh I did an audio post this morning when I was out on my, my walk and my bike ride, kind of letting folks know that this is a little intimidating for me because I'm gonna really throw myself out there. And, you know, and it's gonna be the good, the bad, and the ugly, and the sometimes humorous. Um, because I feel like a lot of times we wanna just say, I, you know, we don't, we want to have this face, you know, this really good face forward and, and not admit to any faults or any, you know, weaknesses. And the fact is we're all human beings, we're getting older, and yeah, there's weaknesses. So I'm, I'm throwing myself out there. So Penny, when I told Penny this story, she said, I, you need to go, you need to go talk to Dr. Ho and Dr. Q. She said, they're they right up your alley, so that's why I'm here. So I'm in my 40s. Also, here's the, the scary part, right? I'm in my 40s. And I haven't always lived a really healthy lifestyle. I'm extremely active now. In the last two and a half years, I, I've been cycling a lot. And, and I, in the past, I've run half marathons and 5Ks. And, and so I'm, I'm very active now, but I don't necessarily watch what I eat. I don't really care to. I want to eat that breakfast taco. I want to go to Whataburger. As a matter of fact, Whataburger probably has a lot of their profits due to me, you know? <laughs> so I, I don't want to change the way that I eat per se, but I also recognize that that's me being stubborn. Right. I'm being stubborn about that. Um, I don't want to eat rabbit food all the time. I want to still enjoy life. I want to go have a drink after I ride. I want to go have fun. So my whole journey is trying to find all of that balance. Um, so for someone like myself, who is in that age that you're talking about, that 40s to 50s, that this is the first time they're going to get adjusted, um, what would be some of the, the recommendations that you might have with me not ever having examined me and really having no sense of my personal background or my medical history, just as an overview for folks who might be my age? Well, one thing I will always say is, you know, it's always about progression, not perfection, because if you completely try to change your lifestyle right off the bat, it might happen for a day, it might happen for a week, maybe even a month, but you're just going to revert back to where you were. So our goal is to really just get patients to take one step at a time. I know we like to say you want the breakfast taco, you want that drink, you want the water burger, but you know, right before the water burger, just add a small salad. Right before the breakfast taco, add you know a piece of fruit, and just slowly add things to your lifestyle. And eventually, as you get healthier, as you start to feel better, your body actually craves these healthy things, so your body will slowly be able to transition a lot better through it. So you're talking about adding things and not taking things away. Okay, folks, I don't know if you just heard that, but for me, this was, that was this huge, like, ding! You mean I don't have to not have my breakfast taco? I just need to have, like, a bowl of fruit before the breakfast taco. I don't have to give up my Whataburger. I could just have a salad in front of the Whataburger. I'm guessing that if I have my salad and my fruit in front of these, you know, comfort foods, that I probably won't eat as much of that comfort food as well. So it's kind of like a, it's a win-win overall. Yeah. Your, your body doesn't do very well with deprivation. Um, so when you try to take away things, you can do it for a limited amount of time and you'll go back to doing it again. Right, I'll be 40, <laughs> I'll be over there at the breakfast taco placing like 10 tacos at a time. There we go. Right. So the main thing is this, uh, eat all the healthy stuff first and then you're right, less of the, the bad stuff goes in afterward. And like Dr. Q said, then you're gonna to start to have an affinity for the healthy stuff. Believe it or not, you know, I don't wanna eat that rabbit food all the time, <laughs> but believe it or not, you get to the point where that rabbit food actually tastes good and you want that rabbit food. That's the funny thing. It's kind of like exercise. The first time I ever rode a bike um, as an adult, not as a small child, but as an adult, um, I thought I was gonna die. I was like a gasping windbag. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is painful, I'm slow. But even then, I kind of, there was something in me that said, I kind of like this. And so let me do it again and do it again. Of course, now I can cycle. You know, I've done 54 miles in, you know, at a, in, in a tour, and I can cycle quite a bit. And I love it, and my body craves that. So in other words, it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. And also, you know, when you start to affect the mindset, that's taking one step forward. But then that's, that's the eating well without the cue. And we, we start off talking about thinking well as well, too. What's your mindset about food? So this is how I start to change my lifestyle in terms of some of the food that I eat. Before, let's say, desserts or cake. Um, I love how that cake tastes. It, it smells good, it's comfort food. Um, and that's, that's, my, that's my belief system. Even though I know that cake is not good for me, 
I can stop doing it for a while, but I'll go back to doing it. Right. But now when I look at that cake, oh, you know, that's going to give me diabetes. That's going to give me obesity. Uh, all this work that I'm doing, that's, that's going to just reverse the process. So now my belief system or my paradigm about that cake have changed. So now I don't eat desserts anymore. So every time I look at it, I just look at it myself. I visualize myself being three or 400 pounds overweight. So now that's my negative anchor to that, so I just stop eating that. Oh, so just changing the belief system. Dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll just have one cookie and not two. How about that? <laughs> but that, that's taking another step up, yeah. Mm. So that's why, and you, you mentioned exercise. Some people, belief system about exercise is painful, I don't have time, I don't want to be sore, um, but yet they know it's healthy for them. Now my belief system about exercise, I get to move. Some people don't even move, you know. Uh, some people are wheelchair bound, bedridden. I know it's detoxing for me. I know that that's my happy hormones that's getting released when I'm exercising. So that's my driving force. That's my belief system under exercise. Once that becomes my belief system, I exercise more consistently versus I'm sore, I don't want to work out, I don't have time, and that becomes your belief system. Guess what? Your action is going. Your belief system is going to drive your action, and of course, you're going to stop exercising if that's the case. Right. No, I absolutely understand exactly where you're coming from. I've just become more and more of an exercise person. As a matter of fact, I'm training for a triathlon right now. I'm going to do um, the Martindale Tri, and it's a, I think it's a seven-mile run, a 15- or 16-mile bike, and a five-mile kayak. So I started kayaking recently, and um, I'm building up my upper body, which is kind of nice. I'm liking all this stuff. So, okay, so you've given us a whole lot of stuff to think about, and you've given me a couple of light bulb moments, so I thank you for that. Where can folks go to find out all about what you're doing? Do you have some workshops coming up? You know, is there uh, your website? Obviously, here, your physical address. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a few things that we open up to the community. We work out every Monday and every Wednesday, 6 o'clock here, so that's open to the community. We want the community to be healthier. We have workshop the last Tuesday of each month, 6 o'clock, and the workshop schedule is on our website as well, too, clinicalhealthchoice.com. And those are some of the things I think people can take advantage of, especially when it's free, um, that they can start making a step toward a healthier lifestyle. And, and that's what we want to offer this community, you know. And at the last, uh, the third Tuesday of every month, we also do a dinner with the dogs where we give a free dinner at Texas Land and Cattle, and I do a health talk about, you know, diet, nutrition, exercise, and talk about the spine, too, as well. So that's another venue that you know people can come listen to what we have to say, learn about our healthcare uh, paradigm, and then from there they can come to our office as well. Okay, so you're you're doing a, a dinner with the docs, and you're picking the dinner, right? And so obviously you're probably picking something that's a healthy choice that you can give as an example. Like <laughs> you see what you're eating now; it's actually very good for you as opposed to some of the other things. Well, there's some good things, but of course, most people. They want that baked potato. Yeah, they, they want, want the, that baked potato. They want the baked potato, the huge steak, <laughs> but you know, it's at least they're getting some good information. And from there, they'll be able to make better decisions afterwards, too. So, you talked about the exercise, which caught, by the way, my ears went bing, that you have exercise, uh, community exercise classes here um, a couple times of, during the week. And so, what kind of, what can someone expect when they come in here for the first time? to get healthier. <laughs> <laughs> I, love it. I think we'll end on that one. That's perfect. Thank you both for the interview and for the time. And I'm looking forward to getting to know you all both better. Hey, everybody. Um, if you didn't know, like I didn't know, how important your spine health is, other than the fact that you know it carries you around, uh, take a look at Pinnacle Wellness. Uh, come meet Dr. Ho and Dr. Q. Hey, come work out. I'm probably going to be out here with Penny. And uh, we'll be out here sweating it up and getting healthier every day. Thanks. Thanks, that was fun, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs>